All right, you guys, let's build some soil. Here we go. Let's do it from scratch. So we're going to be using peat moss. We're going to be using mushroom compost, chicken compost, worm castings, rice holes, and pumice. And then we're going to use a whole host of meals and rock dust and gypsum. And we'll talk about those as we add them. So here we go. Let's start with the peat moss. So this is a three cubic foot bale. Each cubic foot is about seven and a half gallons. So this is about 20 gallons of basic uh, peat moss. So we need about 40%, about 40% of our soil is going to be peat moss. Because in my opinion, you know, that really holds everything together, suspends all the nutrients, suspends all the rock dust, just really suspends everything well. And then it also is a very good moisture absorber, which will work really good with our rice holes and our pulmus as aeration. It'll really suspend that rice hole and it'll suspend that pulmus in your peat moss so that you're gonna have lots of little places for your bacteria to build up and grow. And you're also gonna have, all that bacteria is gonna have a lot of access to oxygen uh, because of the aeration in there. What's cool about pulmus and why we like to use pulmus is because you know it has lots of little spaces and holes and ridges and things like that for your bacteria to build up in. Um, and that's the whole process of building live soil. You know, you've got to have this biological system, you know, to break down these nutrients so that your plant can then, um, in turn, pick those nutrients up and absorb them. So this is what we're going to do. What I'd like to do with the peat moss is we're going to add and layer peat moss in here and we're going to moisten each layer of peat moss so that it all mixes really, really well. Peat moss really, it doesn't absorb water really well. It actually repels water until it's moistened. Once that peat moss is moistened, man, then it'll suck in the water really, really good and it'll do its job. So that's why we wanna add just a little bit of moisture to the peat moss in layers so that uh, when we go to mix this whole thing, it mixes really well. And then when we water it at the end, it will be ready to absorb water, you know, as we layer water in here and get this uh, system, this biological system alive. You know, a lot of times you just got to add the moisture to all this. So the biology comes back to life and the engine is started, so to speak. All right, you guys. So we're going to go ahead and add our peat moss. Uh, and then I have almost three gallons of filtered OR water um, in my chape in here. We're trying to produce about 50 gallons of soil because we're gonna do two 15 gallon pots. And then I have another little project that I wanna make a, a little bit of extra soil for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these two containers here, you know, 30-ish gallons each. And we're going to uh, mix in both of these containers and it should make it just a tad bit easier than trying to say mix it on a tarp with a bunch of you know all spread out you know this I should be able to get my hands in there and really kind of get that uh, to get the soil all mixed up to the consistency that I would like it plus you guys they have proven that there are bacteria in the soil that actually will raise serotonin levels and it'll make you happy. So digging in the dirt is a good thing. It really is a good thing. Even though most of this stuff is inert right now, you know, it's not very alive because it hasn't had the moisture to it. Um, there's something calming about having your hands in dirt and actually mixing and making your own soil. I'm telling you, I've been doing this a long time now and I believe in making my own soil from scratch. All right, let's get started. Here we go, peat moss first. I've let this peat moss dry out. I opened up the top of this thing so that this peat moss will dry out so it'll be easier to break up.
All right, let's pump up the champion and get a little water on this stuff. Not too much. You don't want to make mud. You're not making mud. You're making, you're just very, very much so moistening just the top of this thing. Now I'm going to give it a little mix. Just to kind of work that moisture into the peat moss just a little bit. And then we'll give it a little bit more moisture. We're just trying to knock down the dust and get this stuff ready to accept, accept moisture. Because it really does repel moisture until you until it gets to the point where it's it's actually wet. Even just putting your hands in this peat in this peat moss by itself. I don't know. I love mixing soil. I love nature. I love being part of nature. And I think making soil is healthy. Here we go. Split that stuff down real good. It should be ready. We're going to layer some stuff on it. We're going to put the aeration on next. So I believe we're going to do peat moss and then we'll layer um, rice holes and then we'll put pumice next. And we'll do it that way. And we're going to mix it a little by little as we go too, so that everything at the end is ready to go. And then after we get the aeration in there, we're going to save a little bit of it for the end. And we'll put a little of the aeration at the end as well. All right, so I have this apple bag of pomas here. This is one cubic foot, so seven gallons. Um, aeration is going to be another about 20 to 30 percent of your soil. So you're going to see me, I'm going to put basically this whole bag in here. And then I'm going to crack this other bag and put half of that bag in there as well. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is nice pumice. It's not sandy. You know, it's got a lot of larger rock in it, some smaller rock in it. So it's a very good, diverse pumice for this sort of operation. You know, you want it to be nice. You know, there's some pretty good size granules in there. It's really going to hold a lot of bacteria and really make your soil nice. What's cool about pumice, rather than say perlite or vermiculite, and even better than say your rice holes, pumice is, we're trying to make soil that's gonna last. You're gonna do two, three, four, five, six rows out of each one of your 15 gallon pots. And you want this pumice to hold up, you know, you don't want it to compress. Uh, vermiculite compresses and uh, perlite compresses and basically goes away. Paralyte kind of works its way up to the top so that it, 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 eventually you just don't even have any aeration in your soil. So the pumice is really good. It'll stay put. Like I said, it'll give little places for your bacteria to grow and it'll just hold up over the long term. That's what you want. Hmm. All right, let's do this next one. And I don't know if you can see it, but this one is a little bit, this bag here is a little fresher bag, so it has a little more moisture to it. You can feel the moisture in the pumice. Um, that's a good thing. All right. Now I have this bag of rice holes. Build the soil. Good stuff. Organic. These rice holes, you know, build the soil does a great job. But they're just expensive, you guys. They're so expensive because they do carry great organic products. And I use build a soil whenever I can because I know that they do it right. You know what I mean? In this circumstance, we'll definitely have the build a soil rice holes. Rice holes are for the silica. Silica is amazing for yield. It's amazing for making your plants resistant to bugs and disease and things like that. 
Rice holes with silica is an amazing thing and a great aeration. This is gonna slowly break down over time and introduce silica to your soil. But it is gonna go away. You know, it's an organic thing. It's gonna break down um, and eventually it's gonna go away. But um, silica is something you definitely need in your live organic soils. So I'm gonna split this bag between the two. Maybe a little more than we need, but honestly and truly, in my opinion, you can't really go wrong with the rice holes. All right, you guys, let's do a little mix first, and then we'll moisten a little bit, and then we'll add um, probably either one of our compost and then our worm casting, or we'll add both of our composts and the worm casting to top it all off. Honestly, truly, you can do it anyway, you guys. Once you are building your own soil, it just doesn't really matter. Honestly, it's personal preference. So I'm gonna give these a good mix, and we're gonna see where we're at so far with the aeration and the pumice, and then we'll give it a, a little bit of moisture, and then we'll be ready to add the compost and the worm castings, which are the biologicals, which is really gonna make this stuff come to life and uh, be the life of the party, so to speak. You know, you always want that guy that's gonna be the life of the party, or that girl that's gonna be the life of the party. And, uh, Worm castings and compost are the life of the party when it comes to soil. Love mixing soil. Uh, having your hands in the dirt, feeling nature, uh, just a good thing in my opinion. Everybody needs a little nature in their life. That's why we all have the urge to go out camping and we all have the urge to, you know, go swimming and be in the wild because it's just something we need as humans. You know, we live off this stuff. You know, we, what we put in our body, the food we put in our body, you know, should be organic, should be not processed, it should be grown. So what we did, and let me just talk you through it real quick, so that you know what I did. You saw me put the peat moss in, you saw me uh, water it, you know, to help get it to start to absorb water. And then you saw me put the pulmus and the rice holes on it, give it a mix, and that's about where we ended. So after I gave it a mix, I put a little more water in it, you know, because we wanted to layer water. So we did, we moistened it multiple times. And then I added my chicken compost and my mushroom compost to it. And then also that full bag of worm castings that I had. Remember, Chicken compost, mushroom compost, and worm castings are the life of the party. They are the biological system that's gonna get the whole soil biologically active. Um, you know, we're gonna add other things like wakashi, we're gonna add other things like our rock dust and uh, our meals uh, to add fuel to the fire, so to speak, you know, for this biological system we're gonna create. Uh, worm castings have the enzymes and the bacteria and all the different stuff that are going to make nutrients available. So all we did is literally I added the worm castings first from where you saw me mixing the rice holes, the pumice, and the peat moss all together. Then I added the worm castings and then I added almost all of the chicken manure in almost all of the mushroom compost, these, and then mixed again a little bit and added a little more water. And Barney, our mascot, everybody loves Barney. Barney's cool, he just had his bone, so he's coming to, of course, try to work me for another bone. Um, he's such a good boy, yes he is. He's with me all the time while we're making our, uh, our soils and doing all this stuff. He's such a good boy. You might see him pop in and out as we do this. So I'm gonna add, um, a little more compost, a little more mushroom compost to this, just to kind of finish these bags off. And I'm gonna add a little more chicken compost to this because I think they need it. But you know, your compost needs to be a pretty big percentage of your soil. You're talking 30 to 40% peat moss. You're talking 30 to 40% aeration. And you're talking at least another 20 to 25% of compost because that's the life of the party, you know? so. We went ahead and, and basically used both bags 
in this mix. We are ready to go. So I'm gonna mix this up just a little bit more, spread this out just a little bit more, begin the moistening process, give this a little mix before we start adding all of our rock dust and our meals to it. We're still trying to get this peat moss to accept moisture. Well, that's what we're doing. You know, we don't want to wait to do this. So let's get the shape in here. Pump a little water in this. Give it a little more wetness. And then we'll give it another mix. And then we'll start going through our wakashi, our humic acid, our bone meal. We got a, a product called BioLive, Langdamite. Uh, we have our mustard meal. A whole bunch of things that we're going to add to this to really give it all its every all the little stuff, all the micronutrients. Love my chapin. I use my chapin all the time. To me, the chapin is invaluable because you can layer moisture in here. You know, it 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 helps spread the moisture out much better than say just pouring water on here. Um, it in itself is going to aerate the water so that it spreads on the surface better um, and it soaks in better. I personally layer water rather than just dump a bunch of water on it. Um, I like the layering process. You try to always, you know, water that first couple inches of your soil and then you give it an hour or two and that moisture will move down a bit, you know, or, or expand. Um, and then you add a little more water on top of that. So when I'm watering my plants every two or three days, I'm usually going in and I'll water a little bit, a couple hours, I'll water a little bit more, and then a couple more hours, I'll water a little bit more. And that lets that moisture work its way down the pot slowly but surely so that there's no dry pockets in your, in your soil. Because dry pockets are what kills your bacteria. Bacteria love moist surfaces. They like wetness. Not too wet because then it becomes anaerobic. Or you want aerobic, all right, that's plenty of water. So we're gonna mix this up again and then we'll start adding all of our meals and all of our minerals. All right, okay, there's a good starting point. Bukashi, you guys, we got about 50 gallons of uh, of soil here. Maybe just a tad bit more. I, I, I'm gonna tell you, I'm not a measure it out type guy. I'm just not that guy. And I apologize about that. We're gonna add handfuls of stuff, you know, because these are big amounts. Um, Bokashi, you don't wanna to add too much Bokashi, just a little bit of it. Um, I also don't want to downgrade it. I'm gonna put my hands in there. So I'm just gonna spread a little here. It's a, made out of bran. I made this Bokashi myself. And we'll do a segment on making wakashi because I use this in my live system all the time. This helps break down the cover crop that you grow. Um, it helps keep the top of the soil alive and it starts breaking down that top layer of soil and making new soil. Wakashi is amazing. Um, it's a very good, it's very good for the soil web, so to speak. Gypsum is a good source of sulfur. I am going to be putting a lot of different types of calcium in this. In the bone meals and the bone dust and the different things that we put in here. And we'll go over it as we, go, as we do it. So I'm going to add a few handfuls of each one of these. Sulfur is really good stuff. It helps break down um, and is part of the chain that helps break down. It's just good. Gypsum is good. The sulfur is good in your soil. Humic acid. I love this. You know, I've been using this for, for a while now, this down to earth products. It's a little bit cheaper um, than what you might find, say, build a soil. And, and they last a long time. Like this humic acid, I'm use a couple handfuls per thing. You know, I mean, I'm going to get, I'm going to make this thing I'm going to have for probably two years. So that's what I love about buying this stuff. It's very good. It's just good. It's just good product. And I don't think it's quite as expensive as other brands. Um, and I can attest that it works. It works really, really well. This is just a little humic acid. Humic acid isn't compost. And we did qu add quite a bit. So I, I just want to add a little bit more. You see how dark that is? That's a good thing. 
basically just a couple handfuls of humic acid, just to add a little extra. You really can't go wrong with the humic acid. The next thing we're gonna add is some bone meal. And let me put my glasses on because I'm an old guy. And we'll talk about what this bone meal has in it. It's a very good nitrogen source. It has small amount of phosphate in it, but it's a very, it's, it's calcium rich, you know? So this is very good calcium wise. Now you're gonna get a lot of calcium from the gemstone. The more forms of it you can add, the better, in my opinion. Let's crack this thing open. Some would argue that bone meal's not good. You know, it's not organic, it's not this, it's not that. Sometimes you just gotta trust what's on the label. Let's hope that they're being honest about what kind of, what kind of source they're getting it from. And I trust this brand. Kelp meal, love kelp meal. Again, we're gonna add a couple handfuls per, per bucket here. You know, each of these being in the 20 gallon range. All right, you guys, so now we're gonna add some BioLive. Man, I love this BioLive. It has the fish bone meal in it. It has fish meal in it, alfalfa meal, crab meal, shrimp meal, langamite, and kelp meal. Um, we're not gonna add too much, a couple handfuls per, because we are gonna add some langamite itself too. Um, I like adding this because this has sulfur in it as well um, and the magnesium so I'm going to add some of the langamite as well but this biolite it's really good stuff it also has some fungi in it just going to get that whole process going and I just love this biolive uh, I use this as a top dress a lot of the times because it has so many cool things in it you know I usually mix this with a little worm castings and compost uh, with a little bit of jimson in it and that ends up becoming my top dress. And so pretty good stuff. So let's get this open and add a couple handfuls of the BioLive. Again, I love this down to earth product. It is very, very good. Couple handfuls of each, in each one. You know, my handful is about half cup. So basically I'm adding about a cup of these things to each one. Some azomite, azomite's good stuff too. Volcanic ash, it's calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potash. So it has a lot of good properties to it as well. Remember, you just don't want to get too, you want to have a good mix between the meals and the rock dust. It almost needs to be like a 50-50 mix in my opinion, so that you have enough minerals and, and uh, you have enough of everything that this soil needs. When you're building soil, you're basically trying to give the plant all the available, all the things that it needs in the soil. And then you let the plant basically pull the nutrients that it needs at the time that it needs out of the soil. You let the plant do the work rather than adding nutrients. We're not adding nutrients, basically we're adding amendments to your soil. Um, it's just a different process than say the hydro system where you know, you're adding all these chemicals basically to your water each and every day to give it all the stuff it's need, it needs and it's all water soluble. Um, we're allowing the bio biology to break down all this stuff and make it available to the plants and the roots when the plant needs it. And then last but not no, we have still a little mustard seed meal that we're going to add to. Um, worms do not like mustard seed meal. They do not like it. So make sure and put it in at the beginning here, you know, when you're first letting your soil cook, so that it has a chance to kind of break down and, and, um, and not be bad for, for your worms that you're gonna add, that you're gonna add to your pots. Um, I like to personally have a couple different types of worms. I like to do a red wiggler, and I like to add some night crawlers. Remember, the, um, the worm is basically what's going to help keep your, your soil churned up. It's also going to be constantly adding enzymes and bacteria to your soil, 
so that everything is working correct. Those worms are going to keep your soil alive. It's going to keep your soil aerated. It's going to make your soil beautiful. It's going to help break down the old roots, the dying root, or yeah, your dying root systems. It's going to help break down the organics, any kind of organics that you put into uh, the soil. I'm going to teach you this system where we're growing cover crop on a consistent basis. You go, you grow cover crop for your for your mulch. Um, and then you add your Wakashi to your cover crop. It helps break all that down. And then your worms break down all that too. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a full system. You want these worms in there. So it's not phosphate. And then, all right, mustard seed meal. And again, a couple handfuls. This is some pretty potent shit. Gotta be careful with it. Don't go add too much. Don't go too crazy with it. Your worms will not like it. But again, this is helping balance the meals to the, the rock dust. We're going to be adding these same things to the top of it so that we're building soil correctly, you know. It's all about building soil in layers like nature does. Nature just slowly builds soil little by little. Each season, the leaves drop down. Those leaves break up. It's just a whole process. You know, it's a whole natural cycle as it goes through the seasons. We'll have... Um, the forest fires, then you have char, and you're just building this biological system. Prunes and all the different things in nature that your soil needs to have biologicals. Remember, in every, God, every tip, every little tiny bit of soil, there's millions and millions of bacteria in each little bit of soil um, that you make. That's where all the good stuff comes from. Okay, I'm gonna give this a little mix. Um, then I'm gonna moisten it just a little bit. And then we're basically done. And then it just needs to be mixed super thoroughly. And I'll probably speed you up as I go through the process of just mixing this whole thing. Um, so let's let's recap real quick. Peat moss, 30 to 40%. Aeration, 30 to 40%. Pulmus, rice holes. The life of the party, worm castings, chicken compost, and mushroom compost, and then a whole host of meals and rock dust. Gymsum, humic acid, bone meal, kelp meal, langtomite, rock phosphate, azomite, mustard seed meal, and then this biolive that has crustaceans in it, fish meal, things like that in it as well. Mushroom microbiology in it. Um, and I also added the Bokashi, which is also going to get the mycelii going and the microbiology going as well. Kelp meal is good for microbiology as well as the mustard seed meal is very good for the microbiology too, to get to be the life of the party, to get everything going. All right, so let me give this a little mix. We'll uh, add a little more moisture and then I'm going to mix the whole thing. Something about mixing soil. It's been proven that there are bacteria and things in soil that actually create serotonin in your system and actually relax you and gives you a boost, a good feeling, you know, so to speak, when you're getting in touch with nature. So mixing soil and getting your hands in the soil is a very good thing in my opinion. So doing things like this, not only are you creating live organic soil you know, and growing organic stuff, you know, it's good for your uh, your psyche as well. That's another reason why I like watering in levels. Watering is my zen time. You're just sitting there, you know, holding the chapin, making sure you're applying the water evenly. And it's just a, it's just a way to kind of unwind and forget about the day. It's like sitting down and looking at your fish tank for a while or just having some TikTok time, you know, where you're watching funny videos for a bit. You know, your health building those serotonin levels in your mind and just relaxing yourself, getting your, getting your mind off of the day of work or, you know, the things that may have stressed you out, uh, the commute home that may have been paying the ass, that shitty customer you had that day, or 
that employee that was having a bad day at work and you felt their pain and, and all those things. Mixing soil and being part of, of soil and growing organic things can be good for you as well. All right, so we're gonna add a little water to this to get this system kick-started. For the next couple days, I'm gonna keep adding water in layers, watering a couple inches at a time and get this soil moistened and get it all nice and good. So all the bacteria and um, the biologicals in here will really just get ramped up and then we'll create that food web, so to speak, you know, by bacteria and bacteria creating um, this food web system. It's really cool. Um, it's well worth doing. Um, in my opinion, you can grow some amazing cannabis using a live soil system. I just had an experience not too long ago, we were on vacation and you know, I've been smoking my own cannabis for a long, long time. And I honestly had for not realized how good it is. So we go up to Las Vegas, right? And we go for a few days up there to watch my Las Vegas Raiders play. And we ended up, you know, I couldn't, you know, we took a, a flight, so I didn't want to take any of my own cannabis on the plane, just in case and we ended up buying some cannabis from the dispensary. A couple different kinds, a sativa and um, an indica. We're smoking this stuff and, you know, and it kind of got us high, but not very well, very much. It kind of did the job, but not quite as good as you would think. And basically we ended up smoking way more than we would normally. So we ended up getting home and God, I couldn't believe the difference between the high of the cannabis that I grow and the high of the cannabis that from the dispensary, it just wasn't even comparable. It wasn't even comparable, like night and day. Like I literally got the giggles and stuff and I, you know, felt the euphoria of smoking cannabis, really good cannabis that I grew. I must get a taste. Like I complained about, quite a bit is I, I feel like it doesn't matter if you're buying indicas, doesn't matter if you're sativas, hybrids, doesn't matter what you're buying. Like this cannabis nowadays all kind of tastes the same because they're growing it in these big farms, you know, and who knows what they're putting on it. And it's just inert stuff. And it's not live biological systems. You know, we are biological. The earth is biological and it reincarnates and reuses everything that is the cycle of life and the way it should be in my opinion i want you to start growing your own cannabis with live organic soil and taking advantage of the food web um, the organic food web underneath the soil and letting your plants choose what kind of nutrients it needs at the time it needs it you'll be impressed i promise you you'll be impressed and you'll build your own soil just like i do and you'll grow your own cannabis just like I do. If you're a fan of cannabis for medical uses and for recreational uses, good organic cannabis. Trust me on this, you guys. Trust me on this. I promise you, you'll be impressed. All right, I'm gonna water this down and I'm gonna continue to mix it, water it down a little bit more and mix it. And like I said, we'll water over the next couple of days in layers and we'll finish off this process. You guys think you're spending some time with me. I appreciate you. Please like and subscribe. You know, that's what makes it all go around. Thank you very much. Bye now.